Okay, in this tutorial I'm going to cover some basics about IPv6. And what we're going to do is we're going to configure this network right here so that PC1, the host here, can communicate with PC2, but not using IP version 4, using IP version 6. So we're going to rely just on IP version 6. So we're going to have to configure both hosts and we're going to have to configure this router here to work with and route IP version 6. Now, I'm going to also use this tutorial to introduce some basic concepts about IP version 6. So, first of all, a little something about IP version 6. IP version 6 is a 128 bit address. IP version 4, like a 192.168.1.100 address, is a 32 bit address. So, with IP version 6, we're dealing with 128 bit address. There is no subnet mask in IPv6 address. The subnet portion or the network portion is basically a prefix in the host address. All right. There's also no reserved network address or no reserved broadcast address in the network. And another benefit is that the hosts are able to auto configure their IP version 6 addresses and they don't need a DHCP server to do it. They can communicate directly with the router, get the information they need from the router, and then self configure their IP address and the gateway address. So I'm going to switch over really quickly here to a Microsoft Word document and we're going to talk a little bit about the address. So I've got an IPv6 address right here, okay, and you can see that it is um, written in a hex format. So it's a colon hex format where you have four hex digits and then a colon and then another four hex digits and then a colon and so forth, right? Now each hexadecimal character, and they can go from zero up into F, right, because they're base 16, so each character counts for four bits, right? So if you can see here, this is four times four, so this is 16 bits. This is 32 bits, so 32, 64, and you can see I've written here 64 bits across. And then this portion right here is also 64 bits. Now this is important because the first 64 bits is the network portion of your IPv6 address, and the second 64 bits is the host portion of your IPv6 address, right? So this is the identifier that identifies the host, and this is the identifier that identifies basically the network. And I've got it listed out here. So the first 23 bits, right? So we're talking 4, 8, 12, 16, 20, and then this would be 24, but if we just count 3 bits over, the first 23 bits, right, if you're dealing with bits and not hex, is the registry prefix or the IANA, right, internet registry prefix. And then each ISP gets their prefix from the IANA, right, and so that is added on. So if you go from 16 all the way up to 32, right, you have your, have your internet registry and ISP, internet service provider prefix. So the first 32 bits is your internet service provider and the internet registry. So then the next portion, the next 16 bits going from 32 up to 48 is the ISP assigned site prefix. So this is the, this is the prefix that your ISP would give your company or organization. Right, so you can see here that here's my, my internet registry and ISP. Here is my site prefix that I've been given by my ISP. And then the next 16 bits is, let's say, the subnet prefix, the network that you could give a subnet on your organization, right? So I put here site assigned subnet prefix goes all the way up to slash 64. So when you take this all together, this is essentially the network information or the subnet information, right? Okay, and the starting address on a routable IPv6 address usually starts um, from the internet registry starting at 2000. So you can see here 2001. This would be a typical starting address, right? And so this would be your network portion. Now the host portion I've left blank. Now the host portion can be statically configured, it can be dynamically configured, 
and it can be an EUI64 configured uh, where it uses the MAC address of the computer to basically create a unique identifier to identify the host. And we'll see that in a second, right? So I've left this just with all zeros right now. I also want to point out something that with this type of IPv6 address, you can abbreviate the address. So if we were going to abbreviate it, let's do it now, I'll do that now. How would you abbreviate it? Well, you can abbreviate it like this. I'm going to get the cursor over here. You could abbreviate it by going 2001 colon, and then you can omit the leading zeros. So 0db8 could become just db8. Uh, and then if you see here, there's three leading zeros here, so those could be omitted also. So I could put colon 1, and that stands for 0001, right? And then colon 2f00 and let me put a capital F there. And now, since all of these are zeros, you can put two colons next to each other to condense the whole range of zeros. And you can only do this once in an IPv6 address, right? And then at the end, you put slash notation, and you put a 64, which, in, which indicates that the first 64 bits is the network portion, right? So this would be the address abbreviated, right? Okay, and that's saying that right now there's nothing in the host portion, right? And slash 64 indicating that the network portion is 64 bits long in this case. Why? Because there's, let's say, a subnet prefix. Okay, so that is the IP, IPv6 address abbreviated. So now that I have this laid out and I've got my network portion here, let's go and let's configure and then learn by configuring some hosts and the router in Packet Tracer. So we'll switch over to Packet Tracer and you can see here I've put the prefix, the network prefix right here and I've decided that this subnet is going to be 2F00 that'll be the first subnet and that'll be for this network right here and then this subnet this network portion is going to be 2f80 right and this is the second subnet you see 2f80 in the subnet portion of the address and that's going to be for this network right here so we're going to have two subnets this subnet over here and this subnet over here and I'm going to need to connect these devices so I'm going to get a crossover cable and I'll go from fast ethernet 00 over to this PC and then I'll get another crossover cable and cable this up right here. Okay, and now it's time to set up our configurations and run our configurations. So I'm going to select the router and open the command line interface. I'll type in no and we'll return to get started. Put in enable to get to privileged user mode. And I'm going to spread this window out a little bit here. And then I'm going to type Conf T to get to global configuration mode and we'll start with the first command that we're going to need. We're going to type in IPv6 uni tab unicast dash routing and this enables IPv6 routing on the router here. So we'll do that and that needs to be done first. You have to put in this command IPv6 unicast dash, dash routing if you want to configure your interfaces for IPv6. So now I'll go to interface FA0 slash 0, which takes me into configuration, interface configuration mode. And we're going to do IPv6 address. And now we need to put in the address. So I've got it listed right here, what I want it to be. All right. And I'll just copy this here. All right, and copy, and we'll paste that in right here. Okay, so there is the address. All right, 2001 here, colon DB8, colon 1, colon 2F00 for the subnet. I'm going to put in a colon and then another colon, 
and I'm not going to put a space here. I'm going to put slash 64, and then if I put a question mark here, you can see that I have two choices, AnyCast or EUI-64. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the EUI-64 command at the end here, or parameter here at the end. And what that's going to do is, is it's going to take the network portion of the address with the subnet mask, and then it's going to automatically create the host identifier for the host portion of the address. And it's going, going to do that using the MAC address of the Ethernet interface. So I'll just do that. And now I'm going to say IPv6, IPv6 enable, and then no shutdown. All right, and you can see that the interface changes to up and everything is now running. So now let's do that same thing for the other interface. So for the other interface, what I'll do is I'll just say interface FA01 and then IPv6 address. And the only difference in this address is going to be is that it's subnet 2F80 and hit enter. And then we'll say also IPv6 enable and no shutdown. And now the router is configured, both interfaces are configured, right? And we can do a quick control C and then a show interface IPv6 brief command and show, I've got that backwards, IPv6 interface brief command and you can see that was show IPv6 interface brief. You can see that each interface, Fast Ethernet 00 and Fast Ethernet 01, have what's called a link local address. And this is almost like the MAC address on the IP version 4 implementation. This is uh, only on the local network. And you'll see that it always starts with FE80. And then you can see that we have the global unicast address starting with 2001 and you can see that there's our subnet mask right and then right here this is our MAC address and the EUI 64 also inserts FFFE in the middle and on the outside is the MAC address and on before it prior to and after is the MAC address so you can see here here's the link local address for local connections on Fast Ethernet 01, and here's the global unicast. This is the routable address, routable on the internet, that was created. So these were the addresses that were created. Each interface gets a link local address and a global unicast address. So now all we have to do is go to our PCs, and our PCs can pick up an IP address or auto configure their IP address by contacting the router, and we call that a router solicitation and router advertisement. I've got that listed here in my notes here on the side. And you can see here, no DHCP server required. Let's give that a test. So we'll open up the PC. We'll go to desktop, command prompt, and we'll say IPv6 auto IPv6 config that's all one word here, IPv6 config, and then it's auto config. And it does just like that. And then we can do an IPv6 config to see the result. And you can see that now the PC has an IPv6 address. Notice it's a global unicast address starting with 2001, which is routable. And it picked up the default gateway, which is the router, also. And you can see that it picked up the router's link local address, right, that it's going to talk to as a default gateway. And now let's go to the other PC. So we'll go to PC2 here. Click on PC2, desktop, command prompt, IPv6, config, auto config, right? And then we'll just type IPv6 config, and you can see it picked up the address. Now watch this. I'll just pick up this address. I'm going to copy this whole thing, copy it, 
and then we'll go back to PC1, that's PC2 that I can copied the IPv6 address from, and then we'll go back to PC1, and we'll put in ping, and then we'll paste it, and we're going to need to get, off, get rid of the slash 64 at the end, and hit enter, and you can see I'm getting a reply from the other host on the network. So there's my replies. So the ping was successful and packets were sent across the network to the other network, right, through the router. The router routed the packets to PC2 and PC2 returned them. So we made a connection. So once again, I've got the commands listed here that you're going to need to set that up. I'm using Packet Tracer 5.3.3 and I hope that was helpful.